Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Lunges with Mahesh. In our today's video, we will see what are the concepts in real world uh, Kubernetes projects which you will see, right? So when we are preparing for some certification, we will see some concepts. So something related to that in the exam comes, we clear it all good. So those are all the starting point. But when you get into a real project, when you are deployed into a real project, the stuffs which you should be doing like these are like normal stuffs which uh, you need to be knowing uh, is something which we are going to see uh, in this video or if you are going to get a job you are looking for a job in specifically in kubernetes kind of a stuff what are the keywords which you should be putting in your resume so this is going to basically uh, uh, attempt basically the interviewer to ask you questions on those things so putting the keywords is important and also you should be knowing some concepts on it you should have done some real projects on it then it's going to be really good big but these keywords are going to really play important role so those are the thing which we wanted to see let's get into the uh, the video all right i'm using a, a tool called as uh, cloudart.com so a nice tool where you can create a cloud or uh, word cloud kind of a stuff which looks interesting so the first and few uh, few keywords which i want to talk or some concepts which you will be seeing in your day-to-day -day real world kubernetes project is ingress so this is the way which you are going to expose your service to the outside world we have also a couple of videos uh, in the channel so if you want you can look into it i'll also put it in the card so this is in gcp it is going to be implemented by layer 7 load balancer there are a few other options which you see ingress is one one of the important concept which you will be always using so the different ways of exposing the service so ingress is uh, the layer 7 implementation which we are going to do in gcp so there's another option which you see cluster ip is another thing which you may use where you want to use uh, internal ip address to expose it uh, and for that you will have an ingress uh, there is one more thing called as node port and load balancer load balancer is going to be layer 4 uh, implementation in GCP that you will not do it very often usually uh, node port also something which you will not see so ingress is going to become like a very common thing when you do a real implementation so that's the first thing so it shows you nice visualization the second important stuff is basically ci cd so continuous integration and deployment continuous deployment which you are going to do it so for which you will use products like cloud build junkins kind of a stuff or now recently there's also a product called as cloud deploy you may use that as an option so this is again going to become very normal so uh, you just update the container image just do git uh, add git commit and git push it's going to do the entire process triggered and it's going to have a new version deployed into your uh, kubernetes cluster so this is something again going to be common so people will never ever deploy normally uh, like how we do cube cuttle apply minus f that will people will not do it it's going to be deployed via ci cd uh, persistent volume is another thing which will be volume and volume claim will be which will be heavily used in most of the real implementation so uh, these things is going to abstract what is the actual uh, storage component used so right if it's in gcp we are going to use either uh, nfs storage or we are going to use basically gc persistent disk tomorrow when it goes to basically aws it's going to become something like elastic block store uh, kind of a stuff so if you want to hide this stuff from the developers you can use persistent volume and persistent volume claim which is going to be a good choice so this is again going to be a common stuff uh, workload identity is something very very important is what i would say so when we have a kubernetes cluster it's going to be behind the scene running on a virtual machine that virtual machine is going to have a service account now if my workload uh, needs to access BigQuery, should, needs to access Google Cloud Storage Bucket, I should give that service account access to those things. That's not a good choice. That's basically go, going to be based on the nodes service account. Uh, what if tomorrow I need something extra? Maybe I want to access something via Big Table. Then I cannot keep on adding more roles uh, to that service account because the main role the virtual machine should have the service account um, which is used by the virtual machine should be having is basically uh, 
just to pull the container image that's it and write some log and monitoring metrics so usually log um, log writer logging writer monitoring uh, monitoring metrics writer uh, then um, artifact registry reader role kind of a stuff should be good enough but if the workload I have a workload which is basically trying to write it into big table so you need to use workload identity so what is going to be the uh, identity of that workload so you have to use this so this is something like common which has to be done so going forward if you see in kubernetes uh, this is going to be turned on by default is what i have heard so that's one thing uh, private gke folks believe me or not all the kubernetes clusters which you are going to create by default in an organization is going to be always private kubernetes cluster the things which you see in any demos any uh, courses most of the time people make it simple they try to create a public kubernetes cluster believe me or not they will never ever create a public kubernetes cluster in a real implementation it is always going to be private kubernetes cluster in very simple terms the nodes are going to have internal ip address so once it is basically a private gke cluster to make it much further secure uh, it's always preferred to go with uh, private endpoint so i need to see where it is private endpoints yeah uh, private endpoint is going to be another important stuff uh, here private endpoint so meaning basically the master is going to have an internal ip address this is again a, a combination like a, a deadly combination private gk cluster with private endpoint is the awesome choice which you are going to do it another thing which you will be heavily doing is rbac rules uh, role based access control so in gcp you have iam roles so that is going to be only at the maximum level you can do it it is at a, a cluster level uh so if you want to do something more towards a workload maybe i have two workloads i don't want our two workloads in two different namespace so i want to basically control this name should namespace should be accessed by marketing team this namespace should be accessed by engineering team i can create role based access controls that's another important stuff so then security uh, kubernetes network security is going to be another important stuff where you can create network security policies so whether the pods usually by default pods in the same cluster can communicate each other should you block it or should you not block it so how frequently the the certificates which is basically generated by for the master to connect for you to connect with the master uh, endpoint all those things how frequently you rotate it those all things going to come into picture very important so uh, the whole reason for creating this uh, video is whenever you use these terms right basically uh, uh, it's going to really impress the interviewer that okay the person has really worked on these things and you should definitely work on this project then uh, these uh, stuffs concepts then only you'll be able to talk at least for two or three minutes on that that's very important and you will see totally a different world when you do the real implementation so no layer 4 load balancer no node port uh, you will not see simple deployments most of the time it's going to have a persistent volume and a claim stateful set is something going to be heavily use workload identity you will not use a virtual machine service account so it's going to be totally a different world than what you saw in your uh, normal trainings and all so uh, so that is something which you need to keep in mind uh, small uh, marketing here i would say like uh, the the training which basically i take usually on cloud architects kind of stuffs we discuss these concepts to a great extent basically so uh, if you are interested do let me know directly i'll let you know the uh, the content which we usually share so that if you are interested you can enroll into the training so So those are some of the keywords or concepts which you should be using in your real world projects or you will see when you are deployed onto an existing project you will see the the team would have done already these kind of stuffs ci cd using private kubernetes clusters those things which we saw so those are something which you will see as a real world stuff folks so that's a video which i wanted to share today uh, thank you for watching